Hello and welcome, my name is Grace and for today's video I want to talk a little bit about um, working with crow energy versus raven energy. So a while back there was a comment on one of my videos where someone requested, um, asked me if I would discuss the difference between the two. I thought about it and it's like, okay, well, I can, I can certainly talk to you about my experience um, working with both energies and how they differ. Um, but please take this with a grain of salt and this is just Grace's experience because I'm, I'm not an expert in um, animal spirit energy. Uh, I'm just a practitioner and I can only speak from my own practice, my own experiences and how I experience both energies. Um, to me, they're, they're both corvids. So ravens and crows are both corvids, but I experience and work with their energies very differently. For me, they're two completely different things. When I say cra well, craven, wow. When I say raven, I don't mean crow. And when I say crow, I don't mean raven. For me, they're not interchangeable. They are, um, first of all, if you were to study um, raven behavior versus crow behavior, already there's a huge difference um, between the two, uh, not just their size and, um, and how they interact with each other but within their own uh, species not even species you know what i'm saying ravens interact differently amongst themselves than crows do um so we have that all i'm wanting to do today here is talk to you about how i experience their two energies um probably i'm not going to go into how i work with them it's more um my practice is heavily uh, informed again by uh, my Italian background and we see omens in everything um, we I mean like where I come from like you know the fact I'm ethnically Italian all right so um, and there's other cultures as well that see omens in everything and it's and it's you know it's the basis it's quite it's part of the foundation of folk magic in general no matter where you're from to see omens in the natural world, whether it be the wildlife, weather, um, bodies of water, um, trees, plant life, um, insects, it doesn't matter. It's like, you know, it's, it's all about seeing omens and deriving meaning from what you witness in the natural world. So I'm very connected to the natural world. If I'm going to take a little side trip here for a moment, most of my, what's left of my deck collection, um, and I'm talking about like, you know, the decks that I work with the most are, um, there, there's, the, there's the two tarot decks that I use uh, regularly, which is the Toth, and the writer weight. However, when it comes to my own, when it comes to going deeper, okay, those I have, you know, this is where I say, you know what, for me, tarot is part of divination, is heavily divination. It's always been divination. For me, card reading is divination. Card reading is foreseeing uh, the future, whether, whether it be foreseeing future obstacles and um, ways around them and, and yada, 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 and all that stuff. But when it comes to deeper work, when it comes to magical practice, when it comes to um, my personal connection with nature, working with nature, being, being of nature, and um, for me, there's no real demarcation between me and nature. I work with nature. I am the most connected to spirit or God or whatever you wish to call it 
to the, the I am mo I'm closest to the, the divine, to God when I'm in nature, or connecting on some level with nature. So already I'm I'm wired that way, and it's a big, big, big part of my. It's probably the main part of my spirituality is my connection to nature. And then equally, which is interesting, almost equally is my uh, work with spirits and saints and, and, and that kind of stuff. So there's almost like, I want to say that it's like two sides of the same coin that is me. There's nature and then there's spirit. And nature has spirit, nature is in spirit, and spirit is in nature. And at this rate, I'm going to confuse myself because it's, for me, it all exists all at once it's all together it's all it's all one way i express myself spiritually and it's and it's how i connect spiritually um to life in general it's very it's very common for me would to not even think about it and to see signs in nature i'll be driving to work and and um, on my way to work, uh, I had a, as I head out of town, I head through, uh, I uh, drive through an area where there's ravens, not crows, ravens. And these, um, these ravens, depending on how I'm feeling, first of all, it's almost like they know what car I drive and what time I'm, I'm on my way because uh, I, I see them almost daily and there's always some kind of message and in pairs they'll be swooping and kind of like you know um escorting me out of town ravens are a different energy ravens connect me to the unseen ravens connect me to the spirit world ravens are mysterious and Ravens are wise teachers. And f when I see ravens, it's like my heart almost feel almost feels like it, it's about to burst out of my chest. It's like I'm seeing family. Um, for me, it's like I see ravens and it's, 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 it is a, you know, a spiritual experience when I see them and interact with them. And um, I'm fortunate enough to live somewhere where, you know, I have the opportunity to interact with them. But, I, but I'm always overcome with, with their beauty and, and um, how deeply spiritual and mysterious and it's how I feel as though they are um, mess like just their presence is a message from the other side crow energy on the other hand is completely different whereas raven energy i experience as being otherworldly crow is energy is of this world when i interact with crow energy whether it be in a ritual or whether it be out in like you know in the wild like outdoors like in real life Crows is a completely different experience. When I see crows, they, they convey the here and now, earthly. They are of earth. They are of this world compared to ravens who are of the other world, the spirit world. Crow energy for me is an energy of community. It's an energy of problem solving. It's an energy of interacting with others. It's very social energy, whereas it's very extroverted energy, whereas raven energy for me is very introverted and introspective. Crow energy is very outward. It's very community oriented. Crow energy is problem solving. Crow energy is helping others. Crow energy is... Um, being part of a community is is what i experience with crow energy and i'm going to share with you two of my favorite decks when it comes to working with both energies 
and the first one is no is is not going to be any surprise it's um it's been a it's been a favorite since i since i received it since i got it in 2018 and it is the raven's prophecy tarot so these are the backs i'm sorry i don't i don't have the box with me and incidentally i finally got around to um recycling a bunch of deck boxes that i was hanging on to for like ever that i don't use i had to fish this the the box to this deck out of um the recycling pile because i couldn't give it up but anyway so this this deck is more minimal and it, it, it this deck is not more this deck is minimal in its art and I'm sorry, I know the lighting is, I'm still, I'm still figuring things out, people, but you know. So the Raven's Prophecy Tarot is my favorite for, for tapping into that Raven energy, introspective, introverted, introverted, in, introverted, oh my God, introverted, what the hell is that? Introspective, introverted. Uh, otherworldly raven energy connects me to death whereas crow energy is very it connects me to life here on earth so this is my my it's one of my top favorites um, especially for magical work and tapping into that um, raven energy of other world spirit world messages from spirit magical working this is a deck I've, I've mentioned before I use a lot to check my magical working workings and it just aesthetically lends itself and it totally Aesthetically, it does capture Raven energy. Love it, love it, love it. This is one that I'm always going to have. I'm always going, you know, I'm never going to give up this deck. And mine's looking quite worn. Like, you know, even like I had edged it. And you can't tell probably on camera because, you know, whatever. But it's well loved. And can I just say this is some really nice card stock. It's flexible like a playing card but then, and smooth. All right. So when I work with Raven energy, again, like I said, it's very connected to the spirit world. My new favorite deck is this one. It's the Urban Crow Oracle by MJ Cullinane. And she is also the creator of many other decks more notably for me because of my the, the topic today which is crow energy of the crow tarot the crow tarot and i didn't get on um but this this has become um one of my favorite uh oracle decks and i say one of my favorite because oracle decks for me they each serve a different purpose Oracle decks, as I've mentioned, as I've mentioned in a previous video, are decks. I use Oracle a lot for um, spiritual messages from spirit, whereas Tarot is divination. Although this one is the exception to the rule, because I will use this deck for uh, messages from spirit. But this, okay. First of all, let's talk about the backs, people. I'm sorry, the lighting. Let me see if I can. There you go look at the backs look how freaking beautiful let me try to bring it closer oh yeah yeah dish give sorry there's maybe about around here huh? okay the keywords on these cards first of all the way crows are depicted in this deck is exactly the way i experience them in nature it's exactly the way i you know um mj she really she knows she's observed crows she really knows what they're doing out there um and she's captured them beautifully in this oracle deck 
and I am just in love with it. Let me see. Yeah, this is better for you to see the colors. But so I'll just I guess you're going to have to go someplace else to get a better flip through cuz you're not going to get one from me today, sorry. Or rather tonight. But things like resistance exposed. See, these are keywords are just brilliant distance. probably my favorite card in the deck this is what made me pre-order it and again I know I'm gonna say this all the time I still want to be able to talk about tarot and oracle cards but I don't want to create FOMO you know what I mean it's like unless you you know I can't tell you what to do and what not to do but I'm just I'm just explaining to you um, how I'm enjoying this deck like I'm sharing with you how I'm enjoying this deck but I don't want to I don't I'm never gonna say you need to get this you don't need anything. You could be watching um, this video and I'm talking about how I connect to crow and raven energy. And I don't need the cards to correct. To, what I'm trying to say is I don't need cards to connect to raven and crow energy. But since I do, I do love cards and I do love talking about cards, I'm going to share with you decks that I have. That, and this is what I wanted to say. This is my favorite card. This is what made me pre-order it. And it's Wrath. There comes with a little guidebook. And the little guidebook has like a little write-up for each card, which is also um, a great starting point. But look at this. Teamwork. Waterproof. Curiosity. Upheaval. These are very mund. That's that's the word I was looking for. Mundane. Raven en energy is very arcane. It's of of the spirit world, whereas crow energy is very mundane, and it lends itself lends itself very well when problem solving, mundane issues, self interest, soar. Not gonna do a full flip through anomaly I actually saw a white one recently and I did a double take because I thought it was a seagull trickery trickery is a word very well it's a is a quality very well um, connected to crow energy dominance territory crows are very territorial um, interestingly enough what I've observed in the wild like I said I'm not a I'm not a biology I'm not a biologist or anything like that. I'm not an animal expert, but I've witnessed where there are ravens, there are, there aren't any crows, or where there are crows there aren't any ravens, and where there are owls there's neither of them. So, um I find that so I know we're not talking about owls and you know, some, I got these earrings. I have to talk about them. I got these earrings. They're amber, they're owl shaped. Okay. Um so, yeah, so these are two of my favorite, these are my two favorite decks, not two of, these are my two favorite decks, this one for, to tap into crow energy and to uh, utilize the, the intelligence of crow energy to problem solve mundane issues and raven energy to problem solve or to explore arcane um, issues. And it's arcane energy versus mundane energy. And that is pretty much how I work with both energies, how I appreciate them. Uh, I appreciate their similarities as well as their differences. And yeah, in the comments below, if you, if you, if you feel like sharing, tell me um, what and if you work with animal energies what animals do you work with a lot do you have um do you have animals that are similar but but not the same and how they differ um if feel welcome to share if there's a deck you enjoy using to work with the energies that you work with in terms of animal energies not not here with me um 
where I'm recording right now, but uh, my favorite um, animal tarot is Animal Wise by uh, Ted Andrews. That one is still in print and available, and I really enjoy it. The, the, his guidebooks are incredible. And um, so that's it for um, me sharing a little bit about how I work with the two energies, how I differentiate them from each other. And um, I'm probably, if there's, you know, if there's any interest, I think um, I'd be open to sharing my animal decks in general. If you want to see, you know, what uh, animal tarot decks I work with, what animal oracle decks I work with, I'd be happy to share that with you. All right, so that's it for me. And thank you for tuning in. And I'm wishing you all a beautiful day. Bye-bye.